Hello, this is LJ Bothell with the Microsoft Excel file, and we're going to work on creating a consolidated summary table. So there are so many ways to summarize information in Excel. Now, first off, the original tables of data, in a way, are summarizing data from a whole bunch of places, putting them into field columns and record rows. Then from there, you can do a subtotals table, which will allow you to collapse sections to see subtotals, for instance, of various things. Then you could do pivot tables, which actually are serious summarizing tables that will basically grab all the data, summarize it into a few lines, and then let you mix and match what you need to see in them. Well, here's what happens. What happens if you have like an annual table, big one, that's got maybe 20 columns and two or 3,000 rows of records in it, of sales data, of uh, regions, of salaries, of whatever it is that's in there. And you are summarizing it by month. So maybe you create a pivot table for each month so that you can at a glance see that this sort of stuff happened in January or that these were the sales in March or that this category did really well in, in June or whatever. That's great. Now what happens is you have either biannual uh, pivot tables or quarterly pivot tables or a whole year of pivot tables summarizing a massive table. What if at the end of the year you then want to summarize all of that? What do you do? And if this sort of thing happens. This is where you could use a consolidated table wizard function that is best to use for things like summarizing multiple pivot tables. It can summarize multiple tables. The difficulty is that it grabs a lot of information. And if you literally have a whole you know, table of 2000 rows, there isn't that much that it maybe you have two or three of those tables. The idea is you'd be consolidating multiple tables. You wouldn't be consolidating the data within the same table like you do with the subtotals table. Or you, or you wouldn't be sub, uh, totaling all of the data in the same table like you would in one pivot chart. But what you would be doing is if you want to summarize the, the information in the table over a period of time and you've made several summary tables or pivot tables, then you could use the consolidated tool to consolidate the data from them. So what I have here is a file that shows the original table. Then what I did here is I basically broke this table for one year's worth of orders and sales into two um, biannual tables, one for January through June and one for July through December. And I did that so that I could easily make a pivot chart for each one of those. So the first one is for January through June and the second one is for um, July through December. Now what I want to do is I want to summarize both of these tables together. I wasn't able to do it at the beginning of July because I didn't have that information and this first table was perfectly fine for the whole year. And I want to, I, I created another one. Now I could do a pivot table for the whole basic table. That's one way to go. But maybe you don't have access to the original table. Maybe somebody made that, made the pivot tables, there are no links to the original table, and all you have are the pivot tables to take a look at. So this is what we do with that. I've got a new tab here, and what I want to do is consolidate the main table and pine chart. Well, what I mean by consolidated main tables, I want one consolidated table that consolidates the information for 2022 based on the summary pivot tables. And then from there, I want to build a pie chart out if it, it qualifies, if it turns out to be a chart that will work with the information. So in order to start the consolidated table process, I need to open a wizard. And this is a little bit of a labor intensive process. There doesn't seem to be an actual icon anywhere. Although one supposes you could go into your backstage area, file options and dig through the commands in there to see if there's some buried command on the pivot table, excuse me, on the consolidated table wizard. But with, without going through all of that, there is a particular key bind that you can use. So you could just, you know, place your cursor anywhere, but I'm going to try to assume I'm going to put my, my table here. So I'm just going to put my cursor in A6. And I'm going to, this is on a PC for Windows. I really do not know yet how this sort of thing works 
consistently in a Mac. Um, so it may not be an option available because of limitations that Microsoft imposed on the Mac version. So this is for Windows. I'm going to hold down my Alt key and I'm going to hold down my D key at one time. Then I'm going to lift up and press my P key. So hold your Alt key, press that down and press the D is in dog key down. Then you let go of them and then you press the P is in Peter. <laughs> and this is what you get. You get this little wizard. And what I want to do is I want to analyze, and you could actually use this for other things, but what we're using it for is multiple consolidation ranges. I want to consolidate multiple ranges of information. And then from that, what I want to do is create a summary table, which is another word for a pivot table. So what I'm going to be doing is making a pivot table of pivot tables, a consolidated pivot table of pivot tables. So to do that, I select multiple consolidation range. What kind of report do I want to create? Pivot table. You could do a pivot chart later on with the pivot table, but I think it's better to start with just the pivot table to make sure you get what you think you're getting. Click Next. Now, you could create a single page field or you create the page fields. This is better so that you can make a determination later on in the pivot table that you get what you want to highlight, whereas it ha uh, this will give you goodness knows what because it's all dependent on the information that you're going to get from the consolidating of the other two pivot tables. So I will create the page fields. Next. Now you have to figure out what you want to consolidate. Now this is an important area. This is where the information that you're grabbing is going to come from. And if you're grabbing from more than one table, you will need to grab information from one table, see that information up here and add it so that the range pops in down here. Then go grab the range from the second table. See that range information show up here and click add to add it down here. And you could do this for multiple tables. We're only going to do two in here, but um, a final project might have four tables to do this with, or it might have a year's worth of tables to do it with. So how do we do this? First, we want to do it off of the pivot tables, not off the main table and not off the biannual tables. It will get huge. It will get unwieldy. It won't help you. The pivot tables. So the first one I want to do is select the pivot table, the first one. And I'm just going to go down here and select it without the grand total, although I believe the thing is all, all put together so that it will we'll grab it. But let's take a look here. are going to add. So this is what I mean. You see the range up here, you click the add button, and then that adds this information down here. And that means you are now able to come up here and select more information. Now, why are we not trying to select the actual totals? Because that sort of doubles the amount of stuff that might go into the consolidated table, and we don't want that. So now we have a second range, and we click add. Make sure you have the two ranges. And since we have only two pivot tables we're doing this from, we are finished here. We're not going to do anything with these page fields at this point, because again, this is something we will assign once we see our final consolidated table from these two pivot tables. So I'm simply going to leave it like this and then click next. Now, where do you want to put the pivot table report? I'm going to put it on this existing worksheet where I have the cell highlighted and it's already chosen it for me, but I could change to another one. You know, I could do this, but I'm just going to put it in A6, then I'm going to click finish. Okay. So right now what it has done is it has consolidated what it could from the two other tables. So this is information for all of 2022. Now it's messy, like pivot tables are wants to be until you fix it and do what you want to do with it. So you also don't necessarily have to see the grand total or you don't have to see the sum of sales or you can keep them both. In this case, I'm going to go ahead and at the moment, well, actually, you don't actually have to hide things. You just come down here and we'll see what, what, what's coming up um, over here. Right now, the sum of value, the row and the column. Let's turn off the column. 
this is what we want to see. We want to just see what the labels are, and we want to see the sum of value. Now, one thing here is that this is kind of messy because you're seeing both the uh, uh, category, you're seeing the sales reps, and that's because in the pivot tables, you are seeing the category, but by bit, you're seeing the segment, the business segment, the home segment, and then you're seeing the category, whether it's food, cookery, ingredients, or seasonings, and you're seeing it focused on the sales rep. Now, interestingly, over here, I am not seeing anything. Oh, yes, I am. We're seeing business, and then a little further, we see home. Then we see cookery, food, ingredients, and what's the other one? It's a little further down here, I think, uh, seasonings. And then you're seeing all the reps. So in this particular case, this is where you would come in and you would filter what you want to see. So the row labels, I might just want to filter this by, well, unselect everything, and I just want to filter it by business and home. So the business sum sales were this much, $1,965, and the home sales were $2,773, and then the grand total of those is this. And I could easily come in here, and I can go to my home tab. I am free to come in and change this to accounting format. And then from here, with this summary table, I could go in and make sure I'm saving my document as I go. So next we need to go ahead and we need to make a pivot chart. So I'm just going to click on the pivot table, click somewhere in there, click pivot chart, and I will get the chance to pick from here what I want. Now given that only two things are selected, business and home, a bar chart or a column chart is probably not going to be terribly helpful. An area chart? Well, I mean, I don't really know what that tells us. Some of these are just simply not going to work or aren't really useful. So this might be okay for a pie chart. So we'll make a pie chart. And then from here, I can shrink that down. I can move this over and so on. Now, if I don't want this or if I want to see something else, I can always delete this chart. I can come back over to this table so, you know, I really, instead of seeing those things, I just want to see the categories. And let me actually let me unselect everything and then choose cookery, food, ingredients, and seasonings. Click OK. And now here's my table. And then from here, once again, I just click inside, insert pivot chart, and now having a clustered column like this makes a little bit more sense, or a bar chart. We'll take and do a bar chart, click OK, and here we go. So that is the basics of how you do a consolidating table of other tables with the most likely and most um, accurate and sensible outcome being doing it from existing summary tables like pivot charts. If we were trying to do it for the big tables, you would get a mass of information that would be so hard to figure out how to filter out, sort through. So I hope this was helpful information for you.